The year of the Univibe continues with a pedal that I haven't seen all that many people talking about. Lots of tonal shaping options, including a throb knob and this great deep teal paint job. It's the Earthquaker Devices, The Depths. The Depths. Dep depths is hard to say, especially once you start thinking about it. Let's just play some guitar. Basics first, this is a Univibe style pedal. So you take four filter stages. That's four flips of the signal's phase resulting in two notches where the signal just kind of gets phased out since a signal meeting the inverted version of itself results in amplitude cancellation. Then you sweep those stages back and forth with an oscillator and you've got more or less a phaser. And a phaser has a very circular, controlled top to bottom and back again sweep. It's almost mechanical or science fiction-y sounding. <laughs> Univibe is much less symmetrical in both the frequencies affected and the path of that sweep itself. And that's because it's got four stages, but they're not all identical like they are in a typical phaser. And because a univibe passes the controlling signal for those filters into a light source, which is then picked up by these photoresistors all around it, that means that the rise and fall of the sweep isn't a straight line, but a function of this light powering up and down and the reaction to that light by these photocells around it. It's wild. And history has it, the specific sound of the Univibe was inspired by the unique and kind of spooky sounds you get when sweeping the frequency dial of a shortwave radio. And as a card-carrying ham radio operator myself, I can tell you, yeah, weird stuff happens when you're listening to a signal from a couple hundred miles away, skipping its way off the Earth's ionosphere as it makes its way across the planet. There's all sorts of pitch and phase modulation, so that origin story definitely tracks. Though when Univibe was marketed to the masses, it was advertised as a Leslie rotating speaker type effect. All right, enough theoretical history stuff. Let's get back to this specific pedal. Now, from the surface, it looks pretty complicated. We've got five knobs on this guy, but if we break it down, these knobs come down to just the volume, the rate, and the voicing. Level is just output volume, and the instructions say one o'clock is unity, anything above that is a boost. And that's good to have because we can do some things with the other knobs on here that give us a perceived drop or gain in volume, and this lets us keep things on the level. 
Then we've got the rate knob, which goes from about one hertz or one cycle per second up to a pretty quick flutter. As for the sound of the effect itself, that gets set with the intensity, voice, and throb. Intensity is the overall, well, the intensity of the effect. Right is more, left is less. Voice affects where the effect lands. Turn to the left and it's more mid-focused, and the more you turn it to the right, the wider range of frequencies it sweeps out to. When I did my video about the Hardwire TR7 Tremolo Rotary, Corb Corbin said he wished it had more throb to it. And who am I to argue? This pedal has a dedicated throb knob, which adds even more of that low-end whump to the bottom of the sweep. The manual says it's pretty subtle, and I have to agree, though there's definitely something there. Let's throw some static through the pedal and graph the frequency response so we can see what those knobs are doing. So here's our static and we'll bring in the effect with the intensity knob. And here we can watch the voice knob affecting which areas of the frequencies are getting swept through. And now as we bring in the throb knob, watch the left side of the spectrum. You can see some of those frequencies getting a little extra kick. Like I said, it's pretty subtle, but it's definitely there. I think one of the reasons I enjoy Univibe so much is that it has elements of all sorts of other effects in there. And this pedal really lets you dig into those elements. On the subtle side of the intensity knob, it's just barely there, adding a little bit of the old depth and dimension, kind of like a chorus pedal. Right around three or four o'clock on the voice knob, the sweep starts to extend outside your typical guitar's frequency range, and you can actually hear it cutting into those low frequencies as it passes, giving it a tremolo-esque type quality. <laughs> And for just about anything else, this is an effect that treats those lower notes with the respect they deserve. When you do those hammer-on Jimmy Stevie Ray chords, the percussive chunk gets caught up in the effect as well, and that's when you get that really good turbulent kind of stuff.
everyone needs a Univibe. I've shown a few on this channel, and so far, no two have really been alike. I'm pretty sure I could tell the Voodoo Lab one from the Ultra Vibe mode on the Hardwire TR7, and the EHX Good Vibes from the MXR Univibe. They all just, they kind of get there differently. And same thing with this one. It's got its own thing. And that's another thing I really enjoy about Univibes. There's chaos in here. It feels like an unbalanced tilt-a-whirl ride, or a car with a bad CV joint trying to make a tight turn into a parking lot. You just have to keep watching because it just sounds like it could come apart at any moment. There's chaos in here. Another really nice thing about this particular pedal is the flexi switch. I love a pedal with a momentary mode and this lets you engage the pedal normally or just for a quick moment by holding the button down. From what I can gather, the inclusion of that switch is the only difference between this one, which is a version 2, and the original version 1. But even without the momentary thing, I'm just a fan of a less noisy foot switch. You probably also noticed that this pedal can run from 9 to 18 volts. I actually preferred the way it sounded at 9 volts. It's a bit more loose and mysterious, I guess. At 18 volts, you gain a little bit more headroom, and it kind of changes the way that sweep happens. Here's a little comparison. For our next little demo jam, I just kind of dragged myself all over the fretboard and let the pedal do its thing. Nothing groundbreaking going on here, but I wanted to show you what happens when you use a Univibe with overdrive. I put the Big John Pocket Rocket, that's a Tube Screamer type pedal, after the Depths pedal, which is how I normally like to set things up for something like this. Another Univibe? I mean, well, who am I to judge? This one's got a ton of flexibility while still keeping it analog and rooted in that ring of photo cells, but with features that I think will make a lot of modern players happy. This is just another great take on a classic effect from Earthquaker devices, and we'll have to check out some more of their other pedals real soon. So make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you come back for more, and I'll catch you on the next one.